UFC 263 would be co-headlined by the highly anticipated rematch between Davis and Figueredo and Brandon Moreno. The first fight between these two flyweights became an instant classic and one of the greatest flyweight fights in the history of the sport. Davison went into the fight as a huge favorite and most of the sport books had written off Moreno, but Moreno was far from it. He came in ready to fight and gave the champion all he could handle. The fight ended in a majority draw and the UFC immediately booked the rematch. If the first fight was any indication, prepare yourself for some high paced fireworks. In this video, we'll break down both fighters and how they match up against each other. First, let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Davison Figueredo stands at 5 foot 5 inches tall with a reach of 68 inches and an 85% finish rate. Brandon Moreno stands at 5 foot 7 inches tall with a reach of 70 inches and a finish rate of 72%. Now, let's take a look at the stand up of both of these men, starting with the champ. Figueredo is quite possibly the scariest and deadliest striker we've ever seen in the flyweight division. Being only 125 pounds, Davison sports some of the hardest hands in the sport and can end a fight in the blink of an eye. Although he packs power in both hands, Figueredo's most lethal shots come via his right hand. Whether it be a right hook or straight, when he lands that power blow, it proves to be deadly time in and time again. As a flyweight, Figueredo comes with the natural ability to be lightning quick. Combo the flyweight speed with the heavy hands. You can see why Davison already has the most knockout finishes in flyweight history. Figueredo likes to push the pace of a fight and get his opponents back up against the cage. Much like a predator stalking its prey, when Figueredo has his opponents backed up and cornered, that's when he'll try to land his devastating blows to end the fight. Another aspect that makes his stand up so special is the fact that he's a dual threat if he needs to be. Figueredo has a significant strikes landed per minute stat of 3.38, a striking accuracy stat of 56%, and has the most knockdowns in flyweight history, and is tied for the most knockout or technical knockout finishes in flyweight history. Figueredo has been able to use the threat of a takedown or submission, or force his opponents to not shoot for takedowns and stand and bang. Figgy keeps his hands low once he's loosened up in a fight, and uses excellent head movement to evade and counter. Even if he does get hit, he has no problem eating it to return with an elbow or uppercut. He trusts in his power and knows that blow for blow, no one's going toe to toe with him. Figueredo doesn't use long combos and uses one and done strikes most of the time. He favors his hooks and will go to the body often, even having dropped opponents with them. Relentless pressure, cardio, and power makes the god of war a force to be reckoned with. Brandon Moreno, on the other hand, is no slouch on the feet. Moreno is the embodiment of the Mexican fighting spirit, showing relentless cardio, toughness, and output. Moreno is another fighter who likes to push the pace and control the octagon with his footwork. Much like the champ, Moreno likes to back his opponents onto the cage before unloading his shots. Brandon likes to use a high guard and get into range of his opponents using quick one-twos to piece his opposition up. He's shown clear as day his striking is among the best in the division as he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champion and took the bout to a draw. Moreno has a significant strikes landed and absorbed per minute of 3.41, meaning he gives just as much as he takes. He also has a striking defense of 59% and a striking accuracy of 38%. Moreno works a quick jab with swift head movement behind it, constantly sticking it in his opponent's face. The jab worked wonders for Moreno against Figueredo and will likely do so again. Unlike Figgy, Moreno comes with quick combos that are staples in both boxing and kickboxing. An example he likes to use often is a left hook to the body followed by a cross. Against an opponent like Figueredo, Moreno needs to rely on his head movement and in and out combos and jabs to wear him down. Figueredo might try to make this fight a sprint, but for Moreno, he needs to make this fight a marathon. Now, let's talk about the grappling of both of these fighters. We touched on this slightly before, but Davison Figueredo is as scary in the grappling as he is in the striking. In fact, he has three wins via submission in the UFC, one fewer than his knockouts. Figueredo is a mixed martial artist at its very core. Along with his superb striking, he has implemented takedowns to keep himself tricky and unpredictable. He has a takedown average of 1.57, takedown accuracy of 50%, takedown defense of 61%, and the highest submission average in flyweight history at 2.36. Figueredo doesn't need takedowns to begin his jiu-jitsu game either. His favorite submission is by far the guillotine choke. More often than not, Figueredo uses guillotine as the perfect defense to his opponent's takedown. If his opponent tries a sloppy takedown, Davison will wrap up the guillotine and play the Uno reverse card with the blink of an eye. It's how he submitted Tim Elliott in a nasty guillotine. Five of his eight submissions are guillotines, so better protect your neck. Figueredo utilizes crisp double legs when he does wrestle, but tends to not wrestle offensively all that much. 
His strong grappling game lets him stay loose on the feet and not worry too much about being taken down. On the ground, you never truly know what to expect from Figueredo. Once he has top position, Figueredo loves to posture up and land some heavy ground and pound. When his opponents eventually make a mistake, the God of War will quickly wrap up a submission. Moving on to the challenger, the grappling aspect is where Brandon Moreno has shined for most of his career. With 10 out of his 18 wins coming via submission, it's no surprise that Figueredo didn't try to take the fight to the ground in their first bout. Much like the champ, Moreno's fight IQ allows him to be unpredictable on the ground. Against Ortiz, Moreno dropped him with a head kick, and when Ortiz was panicking and gave him his back, Moreno instantly took Ortiz's back and locked up a tight body lock and expertly fought the hands until he choked Ortiz into submission. It's no surprise either. Most fighters who expose their back to Moreno end up tapping out to his efficient rear naked choke. Moreno sports a takedown average of 2.01, takedown accuracy of 45%, and a takedown defense of 67%. In their first bout, when the going got tough, Moreno was able to lean on his grappling and take the fight to the ground where he had some moderate success, but Figueredo is a tough man to hold down. Now, how do these two stack up against one another? Well, again, if it weren't for Zhang Wei Li and Joanna Young Jacek putting on one of the greatest MMA fights in the history of the sport, these two flyweights would have been a shoe in for fight of the year. Both men have proven to us time and time again that they are extremely lethal at every aspect of the sport and that their cardio allows them to be dangerous for 25 minutes straight. For the champion, in their first bout, Figueredo found most of his success when he leaned on his predator mentality and stalked Moreno to the cage. He took everything Moreno threw in stride and fired back with hard counters and hooks. If it wasn't for a granite chin and toughness in Moreno, that fight would not have gone 5 rounds. For the upcoming fight, we expect Davison to do more of the same but implement more straight rights, jabs, and wide hooks to get through the high guard of Moreno. With enough forward pressure and strikes, if Figueredo can force Moreno into a sloppy takedown, he has the opportunity to use his patented guillotine choke to stop the fight. On the flip side, Moreno has to work just as hard to be able to stop the champion. Moreno has to be able to force Figueredo on the back foot and not allow him to control the octagon with his footwork. If Moreno can land first and fast, he can throw Davison off his game and begin implementing his own. Moreno outlanded the champ in two of the rounds and tied him in another. If Moreno can push the pace and be more evasive, he might be able to win a decision victory. A game plan of a submission for either fighter is risky, since they're both excellent grapplers and due to the risk of wearing themselves out with takedown attempts. These two warriors gave us the greatest flyweight bout of all time their last time out, and we can't wait to see what new tricks they have up their sleeve. We'll find out at UFC 263. Thanks for watching our video. As always, if you enjoy our content, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.